Hello, this is Tony Hiller from Visitech.ai. In this video, I'm going to show a few ways to do historical weather analysis on our website. This is what the website looks like for our subscribers. The first thing we're going to do is look at Massachusetts temperatures. I'm going to click on the microphone button and say Massachusetts temperatures. Now on the right side of the screen, we have a Google map showing all of the United States historical climatology network stations in Massachusetts. And on the left side of the page is a graph of all 359,222 daily maximum temperatures recorded at those 12 stations. By hovering over a point, you can see what temperature it was and what date it occurred. On August 2nd, 1975, it was 107 degrees at New Bedford, Massachusetts. We will be coming up on the 50th anniversary of that very hot day next week. And on July 4th, 1911, it was 106 degrees at Lawrence, Massachusetts. And on December 29th, 1933, the maximum temperature at Lawrence, Massachusetts was minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit. We can see how complete the temperature coverage is at each station by hovering over it here. Amherst has a very good record. Bedford does not. Blue Hill has a good record. Great Barrington only has temperature records from 1971 to 2002. Lawrence has a good record. New Bedford's record ended in 2002. Plymouth has a limited record. Provincetown has a very limited record. Reading doesn't have a very complete record. Taunton's record ended in 2007. The record at Walpole began about 50 years ago. And the record at West Medway is limited as well. Let's take a closer look at the heat wave of 1911 by right-clicking and dragging a rectangle around it so we can zoom in. Let's zoom in again further using the same technique. And let's zoom in again one more time. Now we can see that it was very hot in Massachusetts from July 2nd, 1911 through July 12th, 1911. Now I'm going to reset the zoom. I'm going to bring the map back up by clicking on the map tab. Now I'm going to tell the app to rank the different stations from warmest to coolest. Rank series. The warmest average maximum temperature is at West Medway. This may not be very meaningful though because the temperature record there is fairly short. Let's hover over the second warmest at Walpole. You can see that the temperature record there isn't very long. It started in 1971. And on the right side you can see where it's located near Blue Hill. This is a Google map so we can zoom in on it and see exactly where that thermometer is located at Walpole. Let's use Google Street View to take a closer look at that thermometer. And there it is right in somebody's front yard. We could do the same exercise for all of the stations in the United States Historical Climatology Network. Now let's just look at the longest recording station in the United States at Blue Hill, Massachusetts. They have a contiguous temperature record going back to 1893. Let's take a look at it on Google Maps. We'll use Street View once again to take a closer look. We can pan around and see what the area looks like. Now I want to take a more detailed look at the temperatures at Blue Hill. Graph by year. Now we have a graph of every year from 1893, beginning on January 1st and ending on December 31st. Once again, I'm going to tell it to rank the years from the warmest to the coolest. Rank series. The warmest year at Blue Hill was 2022, followed by 2012, followed by 1949, followed by 2016. And we can look at individual heat waves like this one on June 3rd, 1919, 
when it was 99 degrees. Another interesting heat wave was April 19, 1976. And there was a heat wave on March 22, 1938, when the temperature was 89 degrees at Blue Hill. Let's take a look at some of the other capabilities of the tool. Longest stretch of days over 95 degrees in Indiana. Now we can see that during 1940, Shoals, Indiana had 30 consecutive days over 95 degrees. The past five minutes has been a brief introduction to looking at temperatures using Visitech. Now let's look at some other types of data. Drought. Now we have a graph of the Palmer Drought Severity Index for every state going back to 1895. Let's take a look at just Massachusetts by selecting Massachusetts from the menu. You can see that the worst drought in Massachusetts occurred during 1965. Let's bring up a map of that drought. Map. You can see that there was a very severe drought in the northeastern United States during December 1965. Now I'm going to use the shift and left arrow keys to circulate through earlier maps. This is November 1965, October, September, August, July 1965. I was in New York City during July 1965 and I remember that they were almost out of drinking water. Now let's take a look at the tornado outbreak of April 3rd, 1974. I'm going to download the data for 1974 from NOAA's Severe Weather Database. Now I'm going to drag the file I just downloaded into the graphing window on Visitech. We can now see all 5,375 severe weather events in the NOAA database for 1974. Let's click on the Table tab to see what types of data are available. In 1974, the only severe weather events which NOAA tracked were hail, thunderstorms, and tornadoes. Now I'm going to tell it to count the number of tornadoes for each date. We can see that on April 3rd, 1974, there were a lot of tornadoes in the United States. Let's take a look at the April 3rd, 1974 tornadoes. NOAA has 239 tornadoes in their database for that day. Some of them are probably duplicates. Let's just take a look at the EF5 tornadoes from April 3rd. We'll select Tornado. NOAA shows 25 F5 tornadoes for that date. Once again, some of these are probably duplicates. Let's zoom in on one of them in Alabama. First, I'm going to double click on it to bring up the details. Now let's take a closer look using Google Street View. So we can see pretty much where the tornado occurred on April 3rd, 1974. We can do all kinds of statistics, but I'm just going to show you one of them right now. For each begin time, count the number of tornadoes. You can see that the most common time for tornadoes was around 1500 hours or 3 o'clock. Actually, let's do one more statistic. For each month name, count the number of tornadoes. Rank series. Most of the tornadoes during 1974 occurred in April, followed by June, followed by May, 
in August. You can pretty much generate any type of statistic which is available from the database, but I'm just showing you a few examples here. For this introductory video, I'm just going to show you one more database. Hurricanes. Now we're looking at every hurricane in the NOAA database going back to 1851. We can do all sorts of sorting like just looking at the category 5 hurricanes. In this short video I've just barely scratched the surface of the capabilities of this tool, but I'm hoping it will create some interest for people to learn more. There'll be lots more videos coming in the future.